Hello everybody, today we'll be learning about post-processing effects in Flax. So the easiest way to change post-processing effects would be creating a post effects volume. So how do we do that? Go to your scene tree, right click, go to new, go to visual and create a post effects volume. And we can see that this post effects volume has a bounding box. This means that the effects of this post effects volume are only gonna be applied if my camera is inside this bounding box. If I don't want that, if I want the settings to be applied globally, I can go to properties to is bounded and just uncheck it. This way, all the settings that you set here are going to be applied globally. By default, we can see that Flax has some effects already enabled. Uh, if you want to change them, what, what you want to do is check enabled and then uncheck this box. And that is how you can enable or disable certain effects. And if I get a little closer, we can see the ambient occlusion happening. We can also change its intensity. Uh, if you, by the way, if you change a value, you can just right click and reset it to default. Uh, we can change its power. We can change its radius. Um, and a bunch of other settings. Next, we got global illumination. I'm not going to get into this right now. That's going to be a separate video. Um, so let's talk about bloom. Bloom, we can see the bloom happening on the sun here. If I disable it, it's gone. Enable it back. And we can change its intensity. We can make it super bright. We can change the blur and all that. So yeah, that's bloom for you. Tone napping, to better demonstrate it, uh, I'm going to change it to none and we can see how like bright colors are like just super exposed. So it's better to set it to either neutral or aces. I prefer aces. You can also change its tints. Give it a tint. You can change its temperature. So yeah, cool effects. Color grading. Um, this tab is super big, but it's basically just color grading. You can change the saturation. We can change the contrast, gamma, and all that. Eye adaptation is basically just a way to simulate how eyes adapt to lighting. If you're in a dark room, after a while, you can see things a little better. The best way to demonstrate this would be going to a corner where, it, where there's no lights. We can see the adaptation happening. If I look away, you can see the effect happening. If you don't want this to happen, uh, you can just set it to none. Yeah, you can also have a bunch of settings here that you can adjust to make it work better. Next, we got camera artifacts. Uh, we got our vignettes. Let's set it to two. We can see the effect a little better. Uh, we got our vignette color, although I don't recommend changing that. We got our shape factor. And that's vignette. Uh, grain is basically just a grain filter. If I set it to one, yep, that's a little funky. And you got a bunch of other settings here for grain. And then we got our chromatic distortion. I love this effect. That's how that works. Lens flare, we already saw the lens flare in action. There you go, we can see it happening there. If you don't want lens flares, just put it to zero. If you want it to be more visible, you can just set the number to be a higher number, like three, you can set it to 10. That's a little too much though. Yeah, we also got a bunch of other settings here that you can adjust. Depth of field, let's enable it. And that's depth of field. By the way, by default, depth of field is not enabled on the editor. What you wanna do is go to view, go to view flags and enable depth of field and motion blur so that you can see these effects in the editor as well. And that's depth of field for you. I'm just gonna disable it because I don't like it. We got motion blur.
Next, we got our SSR. Uh, we can see the SSR happening right here on this blue wall. If you don't want it, you can just completely disable it or you can increase its intensity. We can see that SSR has a little bit of noise. Uh, we can make this go away uh, by changing the depth resolution and ray trace pass resolution to full. That way it's going to look better, but obviously it's going to cost you performance. And lastly, we got anti-aliasing. We got FXAA, we got TAA, and we got SMAA. Uh, TAA also has a bunch of other settings here that you can play with, although the default settings should work for most cases. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, let's talk about the bounding box a little bit. Uh, so if I check is bounded, and let's change some of the settings here so we can see it happening. I'm going to change the color grading. Let's make the gamma and contrast higher. And if I get out of this bounding box, we can see that uh, the effects are gone. Now this is good if you want certain effects to be applied in certain areas. But again, if you don't want that, if you want the settings to be applied globally, you can just uncheck as bounded. Uh, before I end the video, I also want to talk about the directional lights, sky and skylight. If you don't have them in your scene, go to your lights. Uh, we have your directional light here and we got our skylight here. And if you go to visuals, you can have your sky here. If you select your directional light, we, we can see that we can change its brightness. Uh, we can change its color. And we, have, we also have shadow settings. We can just completely disable shadows. Sky is basically just a procedural sky. Uh, make sure that uh, you assign your directional light right here. And that way, if you rotate your sun, you can see it on the sky. And if we put it right around there, we can see that it changes colors. And your skylight is basically uh, just your ambient light. Uh, we got two modes. One is a custom texture. You can have a cube map uh, and use it as a as an ambient light, or you can set it to capture scene and bake it. And this is gonna capture your scene color. And if we come here, we should be able to see uh, the captured probe. I think this is, yeah, this is the one. We can see that like it matches the colors. If you have a skybox, uh, you can use that as your ambient light. And if you wanna, have an actual skybox in the sky, not this procedural sky, what you can do is add a skybox. If you have a cube map, you can set it here, like so. Or if you have a panoramic texture, you can set it here. We can change the color of the skybox as well, and we can also change its exposure. So yeah, that's pretty much it for post-processing effects. I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.